Hey guys, today I wanted to chat with you about products that I no longer buy. I've done a few videos like this on my channel in the past. I think it's been over a year since I did one, so I felt like it was time for an updated version. I think it's a good idea to keep a list of things that you know you shouldn't buy. Things that maybe you know, you've know you bought in the past and just realized that even if they're super popular types of products or even if they are your favorite influencers must have item, it doesn't mean that you need to buy it. We all have different preferences when it comes to makeup. We also all have different budgets and different financial goals. So just because something is an essential for what seems like everyone else in the beauty community or just everyone else in your life doesn't mean that you need to buy it. So I like to keep a running list of these things in my phone just as a reminder to myself that I I don't need to buy these things. And the funny thing is I've done a few videos like this on my channel in the past and a lot of the things that I previously didn't buy that were on my items I no longer buy list are now things that I do buy and vice versa like I've added things to my list that I used to love buying but now they just they don't make sense for me to buy but I was re-inspired to film an updated version of this video when I saw Angelica Nyquist's video on this topic the other day so I'll leave her video linked below I've been loving her channel recently I like to put on her videos while I'm cooking dinner or just like doing stuff around the house I just feel like I, I get in the zone and she uploads really frequently too so it's nice I always feel like I have a video to look forward to from her so definitely recommend her video as well if you were interested in watching more of these. So let's go ahead and get into my items I no longer buy. A lot of these are beauty related and then I have a couple of more lifestyle related items as well. But let me just go ahead and start with one that I've recently discovered it just doesn't make sense for me to buy these, at least at this point in time, and that is cream and liquid highlighters. I don't know what it is. I do love cream bronzers and cream blushes, but for some reason cream highlighters, I just don't know how to fit them into my routine. I love highlighters though, and I do feel like there's been a recent shift in the beauty community where people just don't seem to be as into highlighters as they once were. I'm still a highlighter fanatic. I love a good like blingy highlighter. I think they're so much fun, but Lately, I just prefer powder highlighters, and I only ever find myself reaching for my powder highlighters. I do have a handful of cream highlighters in my collection that I've liked in the past, and I still like them. It's not that their formulas are bad or anything, but I just don't like the concept of cream highlighters these days, even though I like other cream cheek products. And I think the reason is I like to apply highlighter as like the last step of my face makeup. I just like for that to just be like the little finishing touch on my makeup look after I've already powdered. And I know some people are able to make cream cheek products work over powders, and there are some like cream blushes that I feel like work okay over powder, but I don't like putting cream highlighter on top of powder, especially because I powder my under eyes, and anytime I put something creamy on top of that, area it just it starts to make my under eye concealer and my under eye powder look broken up and weird and you know I know some people can get away with not powdering their under eyes I am not one of those people my under eyes I swear they they eat concealer if I don't set it with powder it just melts away it will like concealers will not stay in place on my under eyes if I don't put just a little bit of powder on and I don't find that powder makes my under eyes look overly dry or anything but I don't like to apply cream highlighter before I've applied powder because then I feel like the powder covers it up and it takes away some of the shine and I don't want it to do that. And so I just think powder highlighter makes more sense for the way that I like to do my makeup. So that is why I have stopped buying cream highlighters. The last cream highlighter I bought, I think it was this, the NYX Wonder Stick Dual Ended Contour and Highlighter. And don't get me wrong, I like the highlighter on here just fine, but I don't, it just doesn't make sense for me personally. Hopefully one day I will come around and enjoy cream highlighters again, but these days I just, I don't know, I only really want to reach for my powder highlighters. So for now, at least, I am not buying any more cream or liquid highlighters. The next item is one that I reluctantly stopped buying. I didn't want to stop buying these. Q-tips, okay? So I used to clean out my ears with Q-tips, like many, many people do. But I knew for a long time, I mean, any like doctor, ear, nose, and throat doctor, whatever, will tell you you really shouldn't be putting Q-tips in your ears. They're fine to use to clean like this outer part, 
But for me, I have no self-control. I have no restraint. If I start putting a Q-tip like in the outer part of my ear, I will not be able to stop myself from putting it inside my ear. I just, I can't do it. it look, it feels good, okay? It feels really nice and like satisfying to clean out your ears with Q-tips, okay? And I, I actually tried to stop using Q-tips a while ago, but I still had them in my house. I still had like a package of Q-tips and I just, I couldn't stop for very long. I think I went maybe like a week without using them. So I was like, I know this isn't good for my ears. I'm gonna stop. But then I, I, I hopped right back on the wagon very quickly. So then I decided after we moved and we like got rid of a bunch of stuff, including, you know, like extraneous items, like half full containers of Q-tips, things like that. I decided not to buy them again. I'm just not gonna buy them. And so far, I have done really well with not cleaning out my ears with Q-tips. So instead what I do, and I'm not sure if this is really what you're supposed to do, but when I get out of the shower, I just take a tissue and I clean, I just sort of wipe the outer part of my ear and just as much of the inside as I can like reach with my fingertip. I don't know, this might be TMI, this might be gross, but you know what, we all have ears. I don't push it far in or anything. I kind of just clean the outside of my ear, which I think is really what you're supposed to do. Ear, ear wax is there for a reason. It's supposed to be there to protect your ears from, you know, dust and things getting in there. So it's not a good idea to go digging in there with a Q-tip. But the other thing I've heard is that the bad thing about Q-tips is they will just kind of push the wax further into your ears. So you feel like you're cleaning your ears, but really you're doing more harm than good. Obviously I'm not a doctor or anything like you know, talk to your doctor if you have questions about this. But I will say, at first when I stopped using Q-tips in my ears, I hated it. I was like, this, it, it feels like, I feel like my ears are like, just not clean. But I think I was just used to, I was so used to using Q-tips that not using them felt weird for a little while. But after a while, it kind of let my ears like balance back out or something. And I just stuck to, you know, wiping the outside with a tissue. They've been fine. They've been great. I, I won't say I don't miss using Q-tips in my ears though. I have to say, I, I sometimes I do miss it, but just not allowing myself to have Q-tips in the house, <laughs> this sounds so ridiculous, just not having them in the house at all really does help. So that's my advice for you. If you want to stop cleaning your ears with Q-tips, just get rid of them. Stop buying Q-tips and hopefully you will be able to, you know, get off the, the Q-tip train like I was for so long. So yeah, that's kind of a weird one, but just know if you're addicted to Q-tips like I was, there is a way out. And I, I never really used Q-tips for any other purpose. Like I didn't use them for, you know, makeup or anything. I don't ever really feel the need to have Q-tips for makeup cleanup purposes. Like I know sometimes people might use them to like maybe clean up some mascara that got, you know, smudged or something, but I'll normally just use a spoolie if I accidentally get mascara on my eyelid or something, I'll wait for it to dry and then just flake it off with a spoolie. And that's all. So I don't really feel, I don't find myself needing Q-tips in my beauty routine, luckily. The next item I stopped buying, I think a lot of people have stopped buying these, is liquid lipsticks. I think one thing for me with liquid lipsticks that makes me not want to have them is that they take so long to use up. And I don't know why that deters me from buying a product. I guess I just like to know that I'm going to be able to use something up before it expires. But I have never fully, in all my years of project panning, I've never used up a liquid lipstick, ever. And, you know, maybe the solution to that would be to buy mini liquid lipsticks or something, but I think the main selling point of liquid lipsticks is that they're supposed to be long wearing, but for me, maybe they stay on longer than a bullet lipstick, but most liquid lipsticks on me will wear off in a really stark line that just looks really unflattering. And I think I would rather just wear a regular lipstick that fades off evenly and more gracefully, or even one that fades off quickly, but then I can just reapply, rather than putting on a liquid lipstick that feels dry and that is going to fade off in like a really harsh line and just look really strange. It's funny because today I actually am wearing sort of a liquid lipstick. It's the Urban Decay Vice Lip Bond, which is supposed to be like a shiny liquid lipstick. So it's supposed to be transfer proof, but also have like some shine to it and feel more moisturizing. It's actually not transfer proof. Like it's mostly transfer proof. Like you can see, I just did like the kiss test on my hand and you can see like just a very small amount of transfer. But I still feel like these wear off 
the same way that a liquid lipstick wears off in that way that I don't like where it will start to have this like line on my lips it just looks really awful also these days I've just been very low maintenance with my lip products and I think that's where the overall trends have been heading anyway but I've just been really enjoying very comfortable lip products tinted lip balms um, really been into oh I, I was just looking for it it's in my purse but I've really been into the elf hydrating core lip shine in happy that's the one I've been really into these days and also just lip glosses or if I do want a more opaque color I'll just wear a bullet lipstick with uh, long wearing lip liner and I just feel like those they are easier to reapply if they do fade whereas with most liquid lipsticks I just find it difficult to reapply when they do start to wear off and then they get kind of thick and dry and it's just not my preference anymore. So liquid lipsticks, I've decided I'm not buying anymore. The ones I do have, I wear from time to time. I also do like wearing them as cream blushes, by the way. That's a good way to get use out of those if you no longer like to wear them on your lips. They do last really well on the cheeks and you can just um, like water them down a little bit with some concealer so that they're not like too bright and opaque on your cheeks. And they wear really beautifully for that purpose. But still doesn't make sense for me to buy any new ones. So another category that I've kind of just stopped buying new things in is skincare. I just feel like my skin is happiest when I stick to the basics and when I stick to what I know my skin likes. And that's because my skin is quite sensitive. And ever since I started using a prescription tretinoin, which has worked wonders for my skin in many ways, but it's also forced me to just get rid of all the frills in my skincare routine and just go back to the basics. It's honestly saved me a ton of money on skincare because I pretty much just use like three things on my skin. Cleansing balm, non-foaming cream cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, and tretinoin. So five things, really, that that's all I really need in my skincare. I could get rid of all the other skincare products that I have, and I would be totally fine. Occasionally, I do use a serum or something, or like maybe a toner, but really, I just feel like the fewer products I'm layering on my skin, the happier my skin is, the less I break out, the less irritated my skin gets, the less dry and flaky it gets. Um, and a lot of that is due to tretinoin. Before I went on tretinoin, I was able to have like a 10-step skincare routine, but also my skin was not in that great of shape either. So, you know, trade-offs, I guess. But I do feel like the online skincare community puts a lot of pressure on people to have all these buzzword ingredients incorporated into their routine somehow. Like you need to have a hyaluronic acid serum, a vitamin C serum, uh, a BHA and an AHA exfoliant. Um, what are the other ones? Niacinamide is a big one, which niacinamide is in most moisturizers anyway. So if you're using a moisturizer, you're probably already using niacinamide. And if you're using all of those things and you like having like a 10 or 12 step skincare routine and that's working for you, then by all means keep doing that. But I do think that the average person doesn't need to have all these different products in their routine. It's a waste of money. In the long run, it's probably better for your skin to just use simpler products and then maybe one or two active ingredients that target specific concerns. But you want to let those actives actually be able to do their job without having all these other products like competing with it. So I rarely ever buy new skincare that I haven't tried before because I just like to stick to what I know I'm going to like and what I know my skin is going to like. So I repurchased the same cleanser over and over again, the Paula's Choice Softening Cream Cleanser. Amazing for sensitive skin. If you feel like most cleansers strip and irritate your skin, that one is amazing. And it comes in a value size as well. That's the one I buy. It's a giant bottle of it. Still working on the same one that I bought like six months ago. And then also the Paula's Choice Hydrating Treatment Mask. It's also in their skin recovery line. It's like pretty much the only moisturizer I use. Although I did recently start using the Coco Kind, the new Coco Kind moisturizer, and I'm loving it. Sometimes I will try a new product for those basic categories I mentioned, like cleansing balm, moisturizer, sunscreen, but I'm really not buying anything outside of those basic skincare steps anymore, like serums, toners, facial oils, 
face masks. I just don't buy them anymore and my skin has been happier than ever. So, and if you want to hear about my skincare routine, I did like a one year tretinoin update where I shared like kind of the results that I had after a year and the skincare routine that I use. And the skincare routine is pretty much the same as it was then, if not like even simpler. But um, if you want to hear about like the tips that really saved my skin when I was like getting accustomed to the tretinoin, definitely check out that video. Now there is a specific type of sunscreen that I also stopped buying, which is chemical sunscreens. I sadly, I used to love chemical sunscreens, but for a couple of reasons, mineral sunscreen is just better for me. Chemical sunscreens, one downside to them is they burn my eyes. Even if I try to keep them away from my eye area, a lot of the time they still end up running into my eyes and just it, if you ever had a chemical sunscreen run into your eyes you know the misery that i'm talking about where you just you feel like you have to immediately go and wash your face and wash out your eyes and especially if you wear contact lenses oh my gosh that makes it 10 times worse it's the worst feeling ever so mineral sunscreens do not give me that issue at all. I can put mineral sunscreens on my under eyes, on my eyelids, and my eyes are totally fine. They don't irritate my eyes. And that's one reason why I do prefer mineral sunscreens because I do like to be able to put some sunscreen on my under eyes since that is one of the first places to start showing signs of aging. And even on my eyelids. And yes, when I'm out in the sun, I wear sunglasses and hats and things like that. But I don't wear sunglasses 24-7. I, you know, I probably could stand to wear them even more than I do now. But I also wear glasses, like regular glasses a lot of the time. So a lot of the time I might go walking outside for, you know, 10 minutes or something and I don't have sunglasses on. I know that's bad. I know I should probably get like some prescription sunglasses so that I can wear those more often, but there are always going to be times where my face is exposed to sunlight where I don't have sunglasses on. It's just going to happen, so I would just prefer to keep that skin protected as best I can. So that is one reason why I just stopped buying chemical sunscreens altogether. And I should specify, I'm talking specifically about face sunscreens right now. I actually do prefer chemical sunscreens on my body. Mineral sunscreens just feel so heavy on my body, which is funny because I don't mind them on my face. By the way, if you're wondering what the difference is between mineral and chemical sunscreens, mineral sunscreens are always going to have zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide as the active ingredient. So just look at where it says active ingredients, and if it has those, it's a mineral sunscreen. But the other reason why I've stopped using chemical sunscreens on my face is because they just irritate my skin. They didn't used to. This is a relatively recent development. I think it's because I do use tretinoin now. And tretinoin, while it has had many benefits for my skin, it has also just made my skin a little bit more sensitive to different ingredients. And unfortunately, any chemical sunscreen that I use for more than like one day in a row, it just starts to burn and irritate my skin after a couple of days of using it. So for me, it just makes sense to stick to mineral sunscreens. My skin is happy with them. And so that is one category of skincare that I no longer buy is um, chemical sunscreens. All right, here's more of a lifestyle item that I no longer buy. And this is any fabric softener for laundry, dryer sheets, and fragrance boosters, like the method fragrance beads that you add into your laundry to make it smell really nice. I just decided to stop buying these things because I don't need them. Fragrance beads, they used to just like, they used to just make me really happy to have my laundry smell really fresh, but now I just use a fragrance-free laundry detergent. It's supposed to be better for your skin. Also using fragrance-free laundry products is supposed to help prevent infections down there, you know? If you are prone to those, highly recommend <laughs> switching away from fragranced laundry products. Just get the free and clear, the unscented laundry detergent. That's like all I use in our laundry now. And sometimes I do miss having the really freshly scented laundry, but it's not really, it's just not really worth the extra money to me to be spending on, especially the fragrance beads. I would go through those bottles pretty quickly and those are pricey. Those get really expensive. They're like $10 a bottle for the method ones that I used to buy. So I just kind of decided to stop buying them and I haven't really missed them. And I do like to wear perfume also. And I feel like because I wear perfume most days, it does, I don't really need my perfume to be competing with my laundry scent 
like it's better to just have one and not like a million different scents competing with one another on my on my clothing. I also mentioned fabric softener and dryer sheets. Those are two things that I don't feel like they do anything. Like what exactly is the purpose of fabric softener, especially the liquid fabric softener that you put in to the, the washing machine? What is that even for exactly? Like I used to buy that without even questioning it, but I truly do not notice a difference in my laundry with versus without fabric softener. And the other thing is fabric softener isn't good for certain materials, especially if you use period underwear or like reusable pads, cloth pads. You definitely don't want to use fabric softener with those because it can make those materials less absorbent over time. So that was just kind of a no-brainer to me. I just stopped buying them. And dryer sheets, once again, I just don't really feel like I need them. I guess dryer sheets are supposed to help reduce static, like static cling on laundry. That's another issue I just don't really feel like I have. And if it did become an issue, I think I would want to just get some dryer balls instead. But yeah, I feel like if I were to calculate the amount of money that I have saved not buying those things, fabric softener, dryer sheets, and um, fragrance beads, I would, I've probably saved like hundreds of dollars at this point ever since I stopped buying those, so very happy about that. Another couple of beauty things I've stopped buying, nail polish. I am just too lazy to paint my nails. And I was really into press-on nails there for a while, and I also kind of stopped with those too just because I felt like they were taking up so much of my time putting them on and then removing them. I'll probably get back into those at some point. I feel like press-on nails are more worth it for me than painting my nails because it takes about the same amount of time to apply the press-on nails, but they last like two to three times as long as regular nail polish would on my nails. Even when I use a top coat and a base coat and everything with my nail polish, my nail polish still chips within like two days. So it's just not worth the hassle of painting my nails only to have them chip within a day or two. So that's why press-on nails are more worth it to me. So if I ever do get the urge to have my nails look nice, I will just go for press-on nails. And I really only use nail polish on my toenails now, but I already have plenty of colors to choose from. And it's just one of those items where I used to feel like I needed to have every color under the sun in my nail polish collection because I just wanted to have all these options. But now I just have a selection of colors that I like. I have like a black nail polish, I have a few blue nail polishes because I love blue, it's my favorite color, and then some kind of neutral colors like taupes, maybe some light pinks, but that's it. I don't have all these colors, I don't have every color of the rainbow. I remember I used to have like an orange nail polish and a like bright purple and a bunch of greens and just all every color you could think of I used to have, but now I just I don't buy them anymore because that's another thing, kind of like liquid lipsticks, I have never used up, to my memory at least, I've never used up a full nail polish. So I, it, it just, it stresses me out to have all these bottles of nail polish. Even with the amount that I have now, I probably have like 10 to 15 bottles of nail polish. It still kind of stresses me out knowing that I'll never use them up. So I pretty much stopped buying all nail polishes. I just don't even really look at nail polish at the store anymore. I used to just kind of browse the selection and now I don't even go to that section of the store and I, I don't even think about them. I don't miss them. The last type of item I no longer buy is self tanners. Self tanner is one of those things that I would kind of buy for my fantasy self, but similar to painting my nails, I do not take the time and I will not take the time to apply self tanner. It's a process. You have to exfoliate, you have to get out the mitt, you have to make sure you apply it evenly. And then after three to five days, it starts to wear off. And sometimes it starts to wear off in a patchy manner. For me, it's just not worth all of the time and effort it takes to self tan for it to then wear off within a few days. So I just decided to embrace my pasty legs. <laughs> and I don't love the way they look without self-tanner. I do think they look better with self-tanner on. But I have just decided that I am too low maintenance and lazy <laughs> to do self-tanner. So those are the things that I've stopped buying and I've been so much better off. Now your list of things that you don't buy might be completely different from mine. Maybe you love painting your nails or self-tanning and those are things that you get a lot of joy out of and they're worth it for you. But maybe there are other parts of your beauty routine that 
you're spending money on but you're not even enjoying. Really, I just want to remind you that your beauty routine is for you. You don't have to have some checklist of all these beauty standards that you're aspiring to. You know, having tan skin and having highlighted hair and having your nails done and, and shaving your legs and all these things. Take a look at what your beauty routine consists of and what those things cost and ask yourself if those are really serving you and if you're really enjoying those things for the for the pure enjoyment of it or are you spending your money on those things because you feel like you're just supposed to and you've never really questioned why if you love makeup but you hate wearing foundation you don't have to buy foundation. You don't have to keep wearing foundation. That is completely up to you. I always like to think of beauty as something that I'm doing for myself. I'm not doing my super elaborate makeup routine to impress anybody but myself. And once you start viewing your beauty routine as a form of self-care, as something that you do for the pure enjoyment of it and to take some time for yourself and not to please other people, that's when I feel like beauty and makeup and all these cosmetic things can become very freeing because you're doing them for yourself and not for others. So let me know down below in the comments, what are some either beauty products or even beauty procedures or non-beauty things like lifestyle things that you've stopped purchasing? And I would encourage you to keep that list on your phone or, you know, put it up on your refrigerator or something just as a reminder to yourself. And you can revise the list, of course, like, you know, maybe someday in the future, I will just completely fall in love with liquid highlighters again and I'll take it off my list of things I don't buy. But I do think it's important to think about these things and make sure that you're you're buying things that you actually want to buy and not just things that you feel like you're supposed to buy. But thank you so much for spending some of your day watching my video. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. I do also have a channel membership if you would like to join and get access to exclusive videos every month and support my channel financially. I would love to have you over there. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.